Hey guys, um, normally I kind of got a message with, uh, which this is a message, but with a lot of scriptures, and I'm going to probably say some. Nuts. That's, oh, you can replace it with Jesus too, honestly, but that's as nice as I can say this. What I really want to say in my flesh, Bible, Bible isn't preacher friendly, honestly, guys, but here's either. We can all get on the soapbox on this one, guys, but it's like, man. You, it is time to get on our knees and weep between the porch and the altar and really get a hold of God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. This is a small storm, guys, honestly, compared to what's coming. I'm not making this up to be this something I'm not, because there's so much here, guys, going on. It's just been surreal. But all this stuff, it's just time to say no. Like that, you know, when we tell our kids and about drugs, just say no. I did. Do the Nike commercial, just do it. I did. I don't wear a mask. I don't walk around. I'm not going to hide. Stores are starting to bar you from coming in now if you don't wear one. I just won't shop there. <clears throat> I'm going to say no. I didn't lock myself up. I didn't lock down. Oh, I can hear it now. Obey the laws of the land. I can hear the laws of, you know, don't obey the laws of land. Sorry, my phone just messaged me about something. Um, <clears throat> that I'm not being obedient. Okay, guys, so what are you going to do when the if they tell you there's a vaccine and you know pretty much darn well that it's going to, you know, be tied into the mark of the beast some kind of way eventually? Maybe not today, tomorrow, but soon. Then are you going to take it? Are you going to obey that law? Just say no, guys. Time to rise and shine as, as God's people. And say no. No more aborted babies. No more LGBT. No more running from a virus. I'm not mocking this because it's serious, guys. I've got a friend that's in the hospital and he's battling for his life. So I get the seriousness of it. And a lot of those people that did lose their lives, had loved ones, parents, ch children, grandparents, that's not good. My heart goes out to them. So I'm not mocking that. But what I am going to say is this, guys, people say, do you taking the coronavirus seriously? I'm like, are you taking Jesus seriously because what you succumb to on this earth and we're all going to pales in comparison to, to eternal death? Where are you going to spend the rest of your life? Weep between the porch and the altar, guys. I didn't... I didn't make this mess... I didn't make this mess up. I didn't create it. I didn't stop it. God did. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. <clears throat> you think that the church had some power trip issues and ego issues and all this other stuff that was going on? God just kind of turned the tables. Where are they now? Where are all these supposed powerhouses? And man, guys, everybody's barking about, I'm going to take the mark of the beast. Sorry, but you kind of just did in a roundabout way. We capitulated, cowed down, ran like chickens with our heads cut off. A few didn't. A few pastors didn't. A lot of God's people aren't. But the vast majority of people in the population did across the world. Tucked our tails and ran, sucked it up. And now they're starting to get mad. Where'd all this come from? It was a demonic attack, guys. You can 
pick people and players and you know they're all puppets they don't even some of them don't even know what they, a lot of them don't even know what they're doing and some of them do some of them are practicing it very blatant but i'm not going to go down all those soap boxes and all those rows and all the conspiracy stuff and all the you know of course it's there and a lot of it's true that we're hearing in bits and pieces and parts but is that accomplishing much in the spiritual realm, no, it's not because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual principalities and wickedness and power in high places. Demonic. So nuts is what I'm saying. No, I'm not staying home. No, what, what are they going to do? Bring out the National Guard, stick a gun in our face? Maybe. That could, you know, we could wake up to that tomorrow. Tanks on the streets, trucks up, trucks up or behind or whatever, you know. Guys, look how fast it flipped. Why did it, why did the church let it? Because it was built upon sand, mostly, really, guys. I didn't pull the rug out. God did. For a reason. This is what I'm... This is part of it. I'm going to just say this. A while back, I'm going to end with this. He told me this... Just look at some of my other messages. My name is Jesus. Time to get off the Corona bus. Um, just, man, guys. We need to turn to him and get off of this, out of this mindset of this total, it's nuts, to say the least. But why did it happen? I asked God that too, but just listen to my message and I'll tell you what he showed me why it happened too. The way that it did. It was a lot of it was the GMO gospel. Hear me on this. I was in prayer and he told me, he said, it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. I'm like, that's not going to preach real well, God. That hurts. And I'm ministering at a homeless shelter every Sunday night. I'm one of them. Hurt? So go to Second Chronicles seven fourteen, of course. But turn. He said, "Imagine if, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, and turn from their wicked ways. Humble. Pray. Get up with me at five in the morning. I don't care what your address is. God does. So I'll stick my head out the door. Mine says thirty one oh eight. Yours is different, but God sees us all. Get up with me." I'm not up every day, but I'm trying to. But let's pray as a nation. Get rid of all these dic draconian dictatorships and all these power trip people. But back to this, the ministry and get over themselves. And he said, they're busy trying to build serfs, turfs, and kingdoms that aren't of me. I want a second class citizen their own little turf, turfy world, you know, my ministry, my building, my this, my that, you know, it's like the Johnny Carson show, here's Johnny. <clears throat> you know, you may remember that. You know, I watched it for entertainment, I knew what I was going to get. Most of the time in church, you never knew what you are going to get. And kingdoms that aren't of me, this is me, this is my kingdom, I'm, I'm a know-it-all, everybody wants to be apostle, prophet, or the pope so that they don't have to listen to anybody, God included, Jesus included, and all the Ghost included, and His Word included. The GMO Gospel is give me all your glory, all your money, and all your obedience, and what you say doesn't really matter. Or what I do with the money doesn't really matter. And it was treated like, you know, we were like kind of like a big ATM machine. You give $100 and you get back 1000 and seed offering, and you know, man, that was a mess, guys. And I asked God that. He had ever showed me this message. And I was like, okay. And then this happened. I'm not saying all of them, guys, because there's some really good Christian people out there. I'm saying he's redirecting his leaders. Some of them aren't even listening right now, guys. They're probably tuning it out right now. But well, so I, they're tuning it out because I, you know, see it. 
just oblivious to it. They have a little pile of money and think they can just keep doing what they're going to keep doing. And it ain't happening no more. We're not going to hoodwink God anymore, guys, on this one. Took me back to something, a long story short, but I worked at this building and they were tearing it down. I wasn't working there anymore. It had been years before, and a couple years before, and it was a very nice building. I'm like, man, God, they tore it down. Perfectly good bit. It was really nice, actually. It tore it down. Took me back to that. It, it, this was 15 years ago. A long time ago. He took me back to that. He said, God, that's what happened to this religious church world. It imploded, guys, on itself. And God let it. Because it was built upon sand. He's building this upon the rock. I'm not saying some of them are going to come back. Some of them are going to survive. But it's going to be his way and not our way. Not all this surreal circus act. And some of them, you know, it's like, an event, sell a ticket to it, or a rock band, or a, man, you know, I look at some of them, and I try to watch some of them, I try not to watch too many of them, but <clears throat> all different, look up different ones on Instagram, or wherever, on my Facebook feed, or whatever, man, don't talk about God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, or His Word, and if they do, it's very little, kind of hiding in plain sight, and then people that are in charge, nothing. It's about their meals or their friends or family, you know. And I, and I uh, you know, I got friends, family, grandkids. I love all those posts too, you know. But tell me about God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. If I'm coming to you for spiritual food, I'm sorry. You know, we stuck in God we trust on a dollar bill and we think we can hoodwink God and we're such a grand, great, grand nation. Why am I all, why are all these, about these storms coming all about idols? Hulk Hogan said it even. Idols are coming down, guys. He's a jealous God. So much to this, guys, but what I'm saying is nuts. We think that the church was on a power trip. Wait till, this is what the Lord told me. Wait till the world gets a hold of this. And look what they just did to us, guys. Our, I don't, it's not a bug, it's a virus. I'm not a scientist. I don't know, you know, exactly. You, you, man, you can correct me all day long on this one. Like I said, I'm not mocking that and the seriousness of it. And I am mocking what people are doing because a lot of them are being pawns and puppeted about. What I'm saying is it's time to say no. Nuts. No, I'm not staying home. No, you're not going to lock me up. No, you're not going to destroy, destroy us as a people and make us servants and slaves. No, I'm a child of the king, a peculiar person, a royal priesthood. I'm going to end with this. It's on there. Isaiah 60 and 60:22, or the sound of silence. Where the sound of silence came in as I was in prayer a while back, eight months ago, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, "Look up the words to the song, the sound of silence." And I did. Very first phrases. It was almost it was almost prophetic, guys, for a rock and roll song. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I come to talk to you again. And farther and down, it's they worshipped a neon god to the god that they made that they bowed to. Towards the end, it's the words of a prophet were written on a subway wall. Why on a subway wall? Because because we become underground, guys. Nobody believes us. The world, man, we're just all these supposed powerhouses. And where are they right now? Are they even doing anything to help anybody? No, they're not. 
and regroup and circle in the wagons, trying to stack up the one little bit of money that they can still bring in, or maybe they are bringing in a lot of money. They're just re reorganizing. It's like companies when they go bankrupt, the, the debt's wiped out and they start all over. They think they're going to just regroup and restart. I didn't do this, guys. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost and His Word did. Cut the, cut the strings. Let's get this right. And you're not going to get it right with all your theology. It's going to take some theology. It's time to, to weep between the porch and the altar and really get a hold of Him. Not His presence, not some surreal thing that you created that's nothing a nothing burger. Sorry. Nuts. Not the government. The government's not going to bail us out of this one. I'm not looking for a government bailout. Are you looking for a $1,200 check that wasn't even, most of us, that's not even one paycheck. And then they're floating around 2000 Man, guys, it's fake money. Where are they getting it from? Just going more into debt. It's credit card money or whatever. You know, second grade math tells me there's a problem here. It's a setup. It's a trap door. The devil tried to usher in the mark of the beast, and he's still trying, and he's still trying to bust that door down. And most of us capitulated. Look around. What did people do? Some Christianese, the verse and stuff. And there's companies that claim to be Christian merchandise and they're selling masks with scriptures on them or with the song on them or just I put on there is that ironic or mocking the power of the cross be real guys it's time to get real guys this is not a game that you might win or lose this is not monopoly you don't get to pass go and collect 200 bucks Nuts. Let's get the little Holy Ghost backbone here, guys. Where I got this from, and I'm going to end with this. I'm probably misquoting his name. General McAuliffe. 101, 101st Airborne. Battle of Bastel and the Battle of the Bulge. Hit Hitler's army had him surrounded. Gen I think it was Piper, General Piper or somebody. But anyhow, they were surrounded by tanks and artillery and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, I think. About to get wiped out. They sent them an ultimatum. Surrender, or we're just going to destroy you. You know, tomorrow tomorrow morning, I think, was what it, what it was. I, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It, that's fine. No big deal. You'll get the point. You get the point. His response was one word, nuts. That's my response to the coronavirus, to the devil, to the government even. I'm sorry. Nuts. I'm not staying home. Nuts. Didn't either. Hadn't. Won't. I'm about my father's business, guys. Uh, you know, are you ready to go to jail? Kind of, honestly. Guys, a few people had to, sort of, you know, not very, very long, but, man, what's coming? Are we just going to be silent and sit back and... I'm saying no. And I know some other good preachers that are saying no, too. You know, the good men and women of God, they're saying no. A lot of them are in the helps ministry. They're still out feeding the poor. They're, man, the poor have been kicked around really bad. Homeless people here in Dallas. All these draconian laws, dictatorship, power trip people, ego. Don't even know where they're coming from. I do. They don't. Nuts. It's a nice word. As nice as I'm going to get. So... These were this morning. Isaiah 32 
in Isaiah 33, in Psalms 32 and 33, your scriptures. And then a couple days ago was a dream, Romans 8, 18, 8, 12 through 18, but all of it. And the Lord spoke to me and he said that it was all tied in, which I'm going to put this message out probably Sunday. Try to. I already got parts of it, but it's about the marriage supper of the Lamb, guys. And I will end with this, but read it. He's calling everybody to the wedding. Come on, all you, come on, you that are laboring, are heavy laden. My uncle, he's, he's got a sup, marriage supper of the Lamb. He's got a feast prepared for us, a wedding. Robe of righteousness. It's all set up, guys. He just wants it to show up as his guests. And then he took it lightly. Read the whole thing, guys, and read what he, read what happened to those who took it lightly. Read it, guys. Matthew 22. Read it and weep between the porch and the altar at 5 a.m. with me, because that's what he told me to tell people in this world and in this nation. Call them to prayer at 5 in the morning, 5 a.m. There's a reason for 5. It's a period of grace. It may not last. I don't know. Love you guys. I really do. Look at my other messages. But this one, no. You're nuts. I'm not waiting for a government handout bail out God Jesus the Holy Ghost is word on my source and I can prove it too so anyhow we love you guys talk to you soon um, check out some of my other messages comment on this one email me you can email us at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com um, love you guys bye